from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily Televised Mass. My name is Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a donation from an anonymous donor from Quebec. This Mass is offered for the intentions of the family and for all those participating in it, whether here at Loretto Abbey or at home. Our most sincere thanks to our donor in Quebec for making it possible for so many people across Canada and beyond to begin a new week with this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ, your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem he shall judge between nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spear into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let's go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing. Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. As was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. 
let us see your face and we shall be saved. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. To the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. The word Advent comes from a similar sounding Latin word, Adventus, which means a coming or an arrival. As a season of the liturgical year, Advent is most obviously a period of preparation for our annual solemn celebration at Christmas of the coming of the Son or Word of God into our world in the person of the child Jesus. In a new and unheard of way, God comes into our midst in Jesus, offering those who welcome him forgiveness and reconciliation and the possibility of a new and renewed life. This, however, is not the only coming of God in Christ that is remembered and celebrated during Advent. The liturgy of this season also speaks of the coming of the risen Christ at the end of time when he will bring to fulfillment God's creative and redemptive activity and his coming here and now into our hearts, into our communities, and into our world. Advent reminds us that the biblical God is in no sense distant or indifferent. He remains close to and concerned with the whole of his creation, and especially with those creatures like ourselves whom he calls into a personal relationship with him. Almost every page of the Bible proclaims God as someone who comes. The coming of God that took place in such a unique way in the person and life of Jesus is prolonged for us through the gift of the Spirit. It is that gift which enables us to respond in positive and life-giving ways to the presence of the risen Christ in us, in the church, and in the world. Even as Advent recalls and celebrates the threefold coming of Christ, it also and most pressingly invites us to do all that we can to prepare the way for his coming, especially his coming here and now. The first reading of daily Mass throughout the Advent season is taken from the Old Testament, and most often from the book of the prophet Isaiah. His is in many ways the most remarkable of the 15 or more prophetic books that can be found in the Bible. It includes oracles from different periods of Israel's history, some of which contain warnings and condemnations, while others are full of promise, consolation, and hope. As early as the New Testament itself, Christians have read many of Isaiah's predictions about the future, 
as referring to the coming of a Messiah or anointed one, someone whom Christians believe is identified with the coming of Christ. Because of this, the book of Isaiah is sometimes called the fifth gospel. Today's reading from Isaiah speaks of what at the time would have been thought of as the distant future. The prophet imagines a time when people from different nations will be drawn to the moral and religious teaching of the Torah and the prophets. Having heard of that teaching, they will come in great numbers to Jerusalem in order to learn more about it. For me, the most striking thing about the reading is the way in which it understands and proclaims the transforming effect of God's word. In days to come, the prophet declares, the word of God will go forth from Jerusalem. It shall convince those who hear and embrace it to beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, the prophet declares, nor shall they learn war anymore. As we look around the world today, and as we remember the devastating and destructive wars that raged throughout so much of the last century, Isaiah's prophecy can seem to be totally unrealistic. It can also, however, be recognized for what it is, an aspiration and a longing that wells up again and again in the human heart, and that any thoughtful person today cannot help but share. Instead of genuine efforts at disarmament, including nuclear disarmament, we have what seems to be an endless growth in the production, selling, and use of increasingly sophisticated weapons. The choice of this particular passage from Isaiah for today's liturgy reminds us that when God comes into the world, his coming is intended to bring peace and reconciliation. One of the tragic aspects of the past and of what is happening today is the way in which religion has been and is appealed to sometimes as a motive for violence and terror. Religious inspiration should never move us to hatred and violence, but always to peace. If this is true of those who belong to the great religious traditions of humanity, it is particularly true of Christians who claim to take the teaching of Jesus seriously. He declared blessed among others, the meek and the merciful, those who hunger and thirst for justice and those who work for peace. Recent popes have all made their own the heartfelt plea of Pope Paul VI before the United Nations in New York in 1965. No more war. War never again. If we could bring ourselves to redirect even a percentage of the enormous amounts of money that go into the development and production of ever more expensive and deadly weapons to the improvement of agriculture and health care, to the overcoming of poverty, as well as help for those most exposed to the result of climate change, we would, in a very real sense, be preparing the way of the Lord. We would, in our own way, be transforming swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. The healings brought about by Jesus, including the one reported in today's Gospel, are all signs of the coming into the world in him of what the Bible calls the kingdom or reign of God. If God's coming means peace, 
It also means healing and wholeness. The life-saving, life-enhancing developments in both the science and art of medicine, like efforts at peace and disarmament, further the coming of God's kingdom among us. The same is true in efforts to eliminate abuse and harassment, racism and prejudice. If the liturgy at Christmas and during Advent invites us to recall and celebrate the past coming of Jesus and his return at the end of time, it also and most pressingly invites us to be open to and to prepare the way for his coming here and now. The book of Revelation and with it the Bible as a whole ends with the prayer, come Lord Jesus, come. It is a prayer that we might want to make our own throughout this year's season of Advent. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will open us in new ways to the coming of Christ into our lives and into our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for an end to war, terror, and violence, and to all the suffering they bring for so many, let us pray to the Lord. Lord in gratitude to those who in different ways commit themselves to the building up of a more humane world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the intentions of our donors and of all those who have written or phoned in asking for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed By the mingling of this water, when I become partakers of his divinity, I became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. God. Gracious God, sacrifice. Wash me from my sin, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we may gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take us, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this spiritual reflection of Father Pedro Arupe. More than ever, I find myself in the hands of God. This is what I've wanted all my life, from my youth. But now, there is a difference. The initiative is entirely with God. It is indeed a profound spiritual experience to know and feel myself so totally in God's hands. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. ideal gift for Christmas? May I suggest Music from the Missions, Part 3. 25 of your favorite hymns that will take you to a different place where you'll always long to return. Music from the Missions. Call us at 1-888-383-6277 for the perfect Christmas gift.